Hello and welcome to Smallville's Moronica This Week. For the week ended February 17th, 2018, the week's news that made you scratch your head, cringe, or just say, that's moronic. Let's take a look at what we had during the week. Well, first of all, we did an entire 28-minute video on the moronica of the week, which was Rod Rosenstein's report that Bob Mueller had captured Russian internet trolls. We're not going to cover that today, but you can go check it out at the Small Gold website or on the YouTube or BitChute Small Gold channels. Our first story in Tax the Wind, in Moronica this week is Tax the Wind. Now, this one seems strange that the Wyoming lawmakers were proposing to tax solar and increasing the wind tax. It's like, wait a minute, they tax the wind? Well, it's not just Wyoming that's unique in this respect. Oklahoma is also mulling a new tax on the wind industry. So if it moves, tax it, move like the wind, tax it twice. Hat tip to Fed Porn for alerting me to that bit of moronica for the week. Well, Dizzy Miss Lizzie is back in the news. I am Pocahontas. She insists, insisting she is a Native American. Dizzy Miss Lizzie stated, I never use my family tree to get a break or get ahead. I never use it to advance my career, other than that time where she ticked the box to get her job as a, quote, person of color at Harvard University, and she made a surprise appearance at some Native American heritage event indicating she's with them. Okay, Miss Lizzie, if dizzy Miss Lizzie, if you like your TP, you can keep your TP. Well, now we have McDonald's Unhappy Meal. What's going on with the McDonald's Unhappy Meal? Well, McDonald's is banishing cheeseburgers and chocolate milk from its Happy Meal. Now, I suppose the idea is that the chocolate milk and the cheeseburgers are unhealthy, as if the rest of the McDonald's meal is going to be healthy. I'll take the unhappy meal next time. All right, what else? Why the Dutch skate well? This one comes to us from none other than Katie Couric. Katie Couric, if you remember, a while back, did a documentary on gun control in which she selectively edited the video and the people's responses to make them look like they were idiots and had no no plausible answer to her brilliant questioning and they showed the gun control advocates sitting there looking at each other but it wasn't a response to her question it was just another part of the video where they were looking at each other they were silent and after Katie Couric had asked her devastatingly brilliant question. They played the ominous music while the gun control advocates looked at each other. And Katie Couric appeared to have brilliantly disarmed, no pun intended, the gun advocates. Well, here she is at the U.S. Olympics, not the U.S. Olympics, the Winter Olympics in South Korea. And she mentioned, did you ever wonder why? that the people from the Netherlands, well, they tend to win the speed skating a lot, and that's because they're good at speed skating because they skate on those, <laughs> on those canals in Amsterdam, not just as a matter of fun, but also as a matter of transportation. So anyone's ever been to Amsterdam, well, no, that's complete rubbish. People are not skating by on the frozen canals of Amsterdam as a means of transportation. She might have had a point of view or a point if she said they're good bicyclists because there are a lot of bicyclists in Amsterdam and it's a flat country. <clears throat> Next one, no best friends allowed. Now this one is under inclusive Moronica and this article is now being written that when kids have best friends it's to the exclusion of the others and we have to eliminate this it's not fair that kids who don't have best friends schools may ban kids from having best friends and it's not the worst idea yeah it is it's a stupid idea that is moronic people want to have best friends they're going to have best friends and you're not going to ban them now, Peter Thiel, he's supposedly, I don't know, he's a conservative, he's a libertarian, he's a Trump supporter. I don't know what he is, but I think he was a founder of PayPal. And for whatever reason, he considers himself not a person who goes along with the political mores of Silicon Valley. So he's had enough. 
and he decides he's going to leave the tech industry. You know, he's going to just take his billions and leave. Because, you know, San Francisco is just, Silicon Valley, just too liberal for him. And he's going to go to Los Angeles. The conservative pastors of Los Angeles, where I guess he could be closer to Hollywood. I don't know why this is even a story. But the logic behind moving from San Francisco to Los Angeles, because they don't like my kind up here, doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Here's the next one. Need more migrants. Now, there's 3.5 million jobless and French companies still can't find staff. Now, I thought the reason they had to have the migrants where they were supposed to fill employment gaps. Well, we know that's not true. Most of the migrants, it appears, or many of them, are unemployed. So how are they going to fix their employment? It's nothing to do with migrants. There's Central Bank, Veronica. Central Bank executive in Singapore said that just as dot cryptocurrency speculation could destroy innovation, and I guess the rationale is you got a lot of these companies out there, they don't make anything useful, they raise money, people speculate on them, they go bust. Yeah, that doesn't destroy innovation. That actually encourages innovation. If there's money out there and they know people are going to speculate on it, you want to get out there, but now you got competition. If everyone's going to go out there and try to throw something up against the wall to see if it works. You know, the dot-com speculation did not destroy innovation. In fact, it weeded out all the dumb ideas, and eventually you were left with only the Internet ideas that were marketable and that worked. So central bank not showing their brighter side there. But did you know that the Anglo-American legal system, to refer to it as that, that's racist. That That is just absolutely racist. Now, go back to San Francisco. Gavin Newsom. Now, I think, I know he was, yes. He, <laughs> Gavin Newsom was the mayor of San Francisco. Not the sharpest tool in the shed here. He tweets this. He's now the lieutenant governor. Not the hardest job in the world either. Now, you got Jeff Sessions here. He's talking about the Anglo-American heritage. Now, all he's talking about, he's, he's not talking about race. He's, not, he's got nothing to do with race. The Anglo-American heritage and law is simply the historic common law that started in England and moved, obviously, with the English settlers into the United States. It is a law based on precedent. It's not based on codifying statutes. It's based on, in one case, we, just, we, we ruled this way, and now the next time the set of facts comes up, we'll rule similar, but we're not necessarily bound to the precedent. We're closely bound, but if the facts are a little different, we can change or create new law. So it's an organic type of law. It's got nothing to do with race whatsoever. And this moron, I'm sorry, Gavin Newsom says, what? when Jeff Session, who is a lawyer, says that, we have to acknowledge our Anglo-American heritage. It says, reminder that our attorney general is an outright racist who wants us all to acknowledge Anglo-American heritage. No, he's not. He's just... <laughs> There's no words for some of this stupidity. Well, Moronica. Well, Sneeze Louise. Here we go. Mar this one comes from Marvis Sarcasticus. Now, this one, on its face, appears to be moronic. It's moronic in two ways. Nothing to sneeze at. Peter Rabbit. Filmmakers apologize for insensitivity depicting a character's allergy in the film, a portrayal that prompted online backlash. Now, I didn't see the movie. I only read accounts. So I'm not quite sure what happened. But it looks like in the movie, which is not in Peter Rabbit, the, the story, some malicious actors throw blackberries at one of the characters. And apparently the character is allergic to the blackberry, so it's mean. And so the character whips out an EpiPen, and that's funny. I don't know how. Now, I would apologize for why even, like, why even have that in the movie? It doesn't make any sense unless you're trying to sell EpiPens, which is probably, there might be some payback there, some, some advertising. But to apologize for making a movie, think of all the nasty stuff you see in movies. And someone getting made fun of for an allergy, and they end up apologizing for it. Doesn't make quite sense at all why they didn't include such a scene and then if they did why apologize for it well here's another one again from marvis sarcasticus 
He's telling us about the problems of Valentine's Day, and I actually think this person is a troll. Maybe they're not. Reminder on Valentine's Day that flowers cannot consent to be picked. Flowers have feelings too, I suppose. What's more, offering mutilated plant genitals to a female exchange for access to her genitals is profiting directly from rape culture. This is known as rape horticulture. Okay, that might be a... I don't know what that is, but I don't know. I don't think it qualifies as moronic. I just think it's a different way, twisted way of looking at things. This is stupidity. This is moronic at its highest levels. Macron, now he is the president of France. He says he's going to reform Islam. <laughs> the president of France is going to reform a religion that's been around for thousands of years and has never, ever, ever, ever once in its entire history taken its cue from a French president. There's nothing in the Quran that says, and yes, whatever the president of France says, we're going a little too far in one direction. We shall look to the president of France to reform our religion. This guy's definitely a couple of sandwiches short of a picnic. He doesn't have any oars in the water. He is adrift and in complete and utter state of moronic bliss. He's going to reform Islam in France. Yes, it's the new generation. Yeah, the Pepsi generation. Now, here's more evidence of the Trump administration colluding with Russia. Treasury Secretary Munchkin says sanctions against Russia are in the near future. So we've got evidence that the Trump administration is colluding with the Russians to put them under sanctions. Mittens Romney. This one is complete moronica. And it's complete moronica in that the guy is going to win. This guy was the mayor of Massachusetts. He liberal state. He enacted Romney care. Ran up the budget there. He decides he's going to run for president. After Trump trolled him to say he could be Secretary of State. He didn't pick him. Well, now he's going to run for senator from Utah. And this, he does an ad campaign video, and he's bragging about how Utahns, they balance their budget, and they're good old people, and they have family values, all the nonsense you normally hear from Republicans trying to act like they're the salt of the earth and not corrupt politicians. But what does he have to do with Utah's finances in the first place? Only finances he knows about are Massachusetts. He's never he's never run a, run the... Utah Treasury. He doesn't know anything about it. Well, he may know about it, but he had no influence on it. He's going to bring, he's saying is, he's going to bring Utah sense to Washington via Massachusetts. Okay. Why from Massachusetts? Now, this has been covered. I noticed this when it came out, when it came out, but this has been covered everywhere from Mark Dice. I just, everyone noted this. The mainstream media's love affair with North Korea. It, it actually beyond Moronica. It was sickening to see this little woman who supposedly is the sister of Dom Young Kung, whatever his name is, in North Korea. And they're making her out to be like she's the most charming, beautiful woman on the planet. And the whole world was fixated on her. And she was better than the United States. And the United States was and Pence. They were just horrible people. To even try to push that across is moronic. But what's interesting is, and I only noticed this myself, and it was pretty obvious. On, on the day of, you can see CNN, New York Times. I was noticing, they're all saying the same nonsense. Uh, New York Times, let's just see what they say here. But not only were they saying the same nonsense, like how could they possibly all come to the conclusion that this little, look at it, this little mousy woman is somehow the most stunning charming person on the planet so here we have without a word only flashing smiles kim jong-un's sister outflanked the president in diplomacy of course she did 
Of course she did. What are you talking about? CNN, what did they say about uh, little Kim Young? Kim's smiling sister exploits Trump moon divide over North Korea. That's Bloomberg. Now, well, how do you get New York Times, Bloomberg, AP, CNN, MSNBC to say the same nonsense? Well, they all say, well, there she is. We're going to get rid of that one. That's Kim's smiling sister. This one is CNN. What was this one here? This one, this woman, I believe, she's from the Washington Post. Kim Young Yoon, the Ivanka Trump of North Korea, enthralls the people. Look at her smiling there like a sphinx. Such astounding, timeless beauty. <laughs> Kim Jong Un, she's stealing the show. Look at her there, smiling and basically making us all forget of the murderous regime in North Korea, of which she is a part. That's it's funny, but facts first. CNN, that wasn't intentional. All right, I didn't believe, I didn't know that that's what they used as her as CNN's tagline there. Now what's this one? Ding, ding, ding! You won the prize. Okay, well I guess that was in response to see a pattern with all of these fawning things about Kim Young Jung's smiling sister, and there's uh, Stalin crowd is enthralled as he waves to his smiling sister as she boards the train headed to Siberia. There they are. Now, what's funny is, uh, they're not funny. Well, this is about funny. It's Veronica. But this woman, Selena Zito, she works for CNN. And she said, I'm deeply sad about how my profession has normalized and glamorized this murderous regime. And then they wonder why no one trusts us. She didn't criticize CNN for that little smiling picture. She criticized everyone else. I think uh, they knew they'd probably gone too far. They trotted her out there to pull it back a bit. Now, Breitbart said, yeah, I, I was just keeping track of this myself. I thought I kind of stumbled on this insight, but apparently everyone noticed it. Breitbart, I only listed four of them, but Breitbart listed 15 media outlets that all said the same nonsense about how North Korea's got cheerleaders. They're wonderful. And his sister is just the, the greatest woman since Cleopatra. And, and unbelievable. All right, we got a couple of more. We'll go to, this is Diane Feinstein. I, I'm not going to get into this. It's moronic, but it would just take too long to explain her level of stupidity about that. You can read the tweets. You can, you can read her. <laughs> she did an analysis refuting. She doesn't know how to refute anything. She knows how to take cough medicine and claim she doesn't know what she's doing because she has a cold. I'm not going to go into her stupidity. Steve Smith says, Diane Feinstein thinks the dossier is true because it's not refuted. She doesn't care. That's completely unverified. I don't think she even knows what she's doing. Uh, Joy Reid. Yes, the term chain migration should never be used because it's offensive. Okay. Oh my, I'm not even, okay, that's enough for this week in Moronica. Join us next week for Moronica this week. And tomorrow we will have the, in case you missed the top gold and silver and crypto stories for the weekend, February 17th. Thanks for listening.